Hello guys, welcome to a new vlog. I hope you'll forgive me for this one being a bit outdated because this was all recorded in the summer, but I kind of accidentally left it all sitting on my computer for over a month and forgot that I hadn't actually edited and rendered it all. So yeah, I just thought I might as well just finish it off now. So yeah, like I said in my Plant Witch video, there's some stuff in here that's kind of backwards now because I've already made videos with the art supplies that I bought in this video, but hopefully that's okay with you guys, so I'm sorry for the confusion there. So this picture that you can see me doodling at the start of the video is just a coloured pencil sketch in my sketchbook of my boy Taryn, who you probably know quite well by now. Uh, this is actually him before he left Syngorn, so before he left his home city and went out into the world and got himself into all sorts of trouble. And yeah, his face was all in one piece at that point, and he was quite a bit prettier, and he wore glasses. And he was still just as much of a grump though, so that hasn't changed. But yeah, I was pretty fond of how this sketch turned out. I feel it captured his personality and his look at the time, how I wanted it to. So I might rework it into a proper coloured piece at some point, maybe for one of my sketchbooks or zines. So I hope you enjoy seeing the process of it. And then we will go onwards to the video, which is from stuff way back in July. So yeah, um, even though it's kind of out of date, I didn't want to put the stuff to waste and hopefully you guys enjoy watching it anyway. So thank you for checking this video out. I hope you enjoy this little summer vlog. I went to Hobbycraft to get another one of these boxes to keep art supplies in. So this is just like odds and ends, like uh, pencils and erasers and washi tape and things like that. Um, I got this, which is a cosmetic bag, and I'm using this to keep loose watercolours in. I don't think I'm going to be able to... Nope, okay, I can sort of open it. <laughs> um, yeah, this has got uh, my water brushes and just loose watercolours in. And I actually find buying cosmetic bags way more useful than buying just pencil cases for art supplies because they're generally cheaper, they're made of wipe clean material and yeah, just all round I think they kind of work as a better idea. Um, you can get ones with like a few compartments as well if you want to keep things separate. So yeah, um, I've just found them to be generally a lot cheaper than pencil cases for some reason so I'd, I'd say that's a good idea if you have a lot of small items that you need to keep organised. So I nearly made it out of Hobbycraft with... Wow, okay. So I nearly made it out of Hobbycraft with the uh, with just the box, but um, I spotted on the way out that they had individual Polychromos pencils, and I've been looking to build up my Polychromos collection because I've got a few odd ones, and I just wanted some muted colours in between to be able to blend them with, and so I went for this selection of kind of, well... They're background colours, but I'm not going to lie, my first thought was I went for them because they are Taran colours and I've been drawing Taran a lot lately. I have a total bias and it's really bad. I did a search for Taran on my computer to find a particular picture and ended up with 28 files. All work in progresses of Taran. <laughs> so it's really bad. i got to draw some of my other uh, original characters, but yeah. Um, th these are just generally really good multi-purpose as well. Um, so they're really good for backgrounds. Um, I was trying to bear in mind which colours I use for accents as well because what I tend to do is use these in conjunction with my watercolour work. So I tend to add like a, a subtle blush to characters cheeks and noses and ears with a light red so I wanted this colour which is a uh, Phoenician red that is and that is such a nice colour. I was glad they had like a piece of paper out so you could try them all as well because then I could get a real idea of how they looked when you um, when you colour with them and when you blend them. Um, then I got the... Oh dear. Caput Mortem Violet. Sounds a bit ominous, that name. Um, yeah, this is like a purplish brown, which is really nice. It works perfectly for shading Taryn's hair, because his hair is like this dark reddish brown. Then I got Caput Mortem, which is obviously in the same vein as the other one, which is just a slightly lighter version. I got these two greens which look quite similar on the barrel but when you actually use them they're quite different um, and the oh stabbed my camera with a pencil well done Rebecca um, yeah this one's called Nougat which is a really nice kind of subtle uh, like a greyish green it's really soft I like it um, and then this is olive green yellowish um, for backgrounds and just uh, shading and so on and then this one which is called earth green and this is a really nice soft green 
and I was actually thinking as well as being able to use this as a shadow tone it would be good for sea and sky and that kind of thing because I realised I always tend to default towards blue for sea and sky and I really need to get out of that habit and I was actually inspired by one of my favourite artists, uh, Toriel Oleski, who goes by the name Starlock and they said that they noticed in their comic, or rather they felt it was an achievement in their comic, that they had never used blue for the sky once. And when I looked back, I was really impressed, because you don't notice it, you don't think, oh that looks weird or anything, because it works so well with the colour schemes of the comic. And yeah, that's something I really want to try, is using something that's out of my comfort zone in every piece I do, and one of the things I need to get out of the default of doing is always going to the same colours for background. Um, and then the last one I got, was just a Payne's Grey, um, which I got because I only have a black in my 12 set that I got, and obviously black is quite harsh for trying to add uh, shading, it's not ideal, so I thought I'd get a grey just to uh, add a bit of a mid-tone there. Not a mid-tone, that's not a technical term whatsoever, but I'm, I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm still learning uh, so much about using colour and trying something different and yeah I'm really enjoying blending watercolour with colour pencil and I'm definitely looking forward to being able to use these in more pieces. I'm so sorry about my nails guys, every time I'm in a video I have to apologise for my nails because sometimes I do maintain them and paint them and they look really nice and then those don't seem to ever be the times that I'm actually filming so you get this, I'm really sorry. This is another thing I've been meaning to get for a while and I hadn't got around to it so I finally picked some up. These are called gilding flakes and you can use them in several different ways. But basically the way I want to do it is to use this glue to mark down the areas where I want the glittery effect. Then you leave it to dry and it goes all tacky and then you rub this on there. And then you rub the excess off with like a sponge or a brush or something and you end up with the uh, glittery flakes left in the place where you had the glue so you can create some really interesting effects it's a little bit fiddly i have done it before um but not with my supplies so i wanted some of my own so um yeah it's a little bit fiddly but i really do like the ending effect and i thought it'd be fun to do kind of like a mixed media illustration because i haven't really done something like that it's kind of watercolors color pencil that kind of thing so i wanted to just kind of add another element to my work in a way speaking of pencil cases i did get this off wish recently and i'm actually impressed. I saw it on a video where art YouTubers buy things from Wish and see what quality they end up with, but yeah I'm actually pleasantly surprised, it's really sturdy. Um, obviously like I said um, I don't tend to like using a normal pencil case for messy art supplies so this is just pens and pencils and things. Um, let me show you. I can't open it. So in the front here I've got my polychromous pencils, I'll probably be putting some more of those in here. I might take the ones that I've got in the tin out of it and uh, put them in another section of this case. Over here I'm just starting to build up this section, so I've got my favourite, the Manga Car Flexible there, and some biros because I really like sketching in biro. I haven't put anything in the middle bits yet, but I'm working on it. Um, and then I've got a water brush, eraser and some metallic ink pens because I really like using these to add a finishing touch to my illustrations and then I will probably put white gel pens in here as well because they're another thing that I use for finishing touches too. So yeah it's got loads of space, um, I'm really pleasantly surprised it was about £8 I think and uh, I will probably be using this to take to my next convention um, and if I just generally go out anywhere and plan on doing some drawing. So I forgot to vlog the process of working on these, it is now the 22nd of July by the way. Uh, but I've been making some new charm designs and they've actually just arrived a few days ago. But I decided to go for two D&D &D designs, one new design of Taran and two pre-existing illustrations which I've adapted into charms. And I made a larger order this time and with Zap if you order 100 charms you can order up to five designs. So I decided to go for the full five and then I can just see how well they do, what's the most popular and then if I need to make more I can do that. So uh, yeah, I've, these two, um, the, the natural one was actually really self-indulgent, I won't lie, because I really wanted to make some merch based around being a disaster because that's me both in game and in real life. Um, yeah, for anyone who doesn't know how clumsy I am in real life, I this year, I think in February, I fell over on ice and hurt my back and it still sometimes hurts. And I also fell up the stairs on a double-decker bus and landed flat on my face in front of about 30 people. So yeah, that's, that's about my level of um, disastrous. 
but yeah, I've passed that on to Taryn, so I roll a lot of ones in game and Taryn has lost weapons, broken weapons, he's fallen into rivers, he's fallen into mountainsides, he's not noticed a tiger creeping up on him. Um, there's been a lot of a lot of situations that could have gone better. So yeah, this is just something I wanted to make and I hope other people will like it too. But yeah, it's all like broken weapons and broken potion bottles and everything going wrong. And then in contrast we've got the Naturally Lucky, which is all the treasure and potions and nice things you can find on your travels when you actually roll well, which is an alien concept. Uh, and then we've got this one, which is tiny and full of rage, which is pretty much Taryn's constant mood and mine as well, if I'm honest. So uh, yeah, I will show you the actual uh, charms now. They're not quite charms yet, actually, if I'm honest, because I've only just ordered the parts. So they haven't arrived, I've just got the acrylics at the moment. but. Yeah, I'm really excited to show you guys because I'm so happy with how these came out. I was a little bit worried after I sent my files off, I suddenly thought what if my designs were too small and fiddly and they won't print at such a small size? But they came out so well and all the detail is there and yeah, I'm just really happy with how these came out. Um, so there's the natural disaster one as well. And yeah, got all those little details in. I tried to make the border big enough that it won't be fragile. So hopefully that's all okay, because um, there's a lot of things to take into account with designing charms. Obviously it's very different to any of the previous merch I've done before. Um, yep, yeah, there's the Taran one, and again, really happy with how it printed. Was a little bit worried about the details, but I'm super happy with that. And then the other two, we've got Sylvan, which you'll have seen in my video about perfectionism. That was one that I did way back before MCM. I only just got the video up recently. Um, but yeah, this is Taryn again, and I did originally plan to kind of do some work on this image and try and adapt it for a charm and simplify it, but in the end I didn't have the time because um, I had to order the charms in a certain date because there was a code to use and it was expiring, so I just sent this file as it is. And really now bus going past. Um, yeah, so I just um, removed the background from the original image and then just sent this off as it is and it's printed really well and I'm so happy. Um, and then the last one, this is Cinnamon, my biggest selling cinnamon design from my stickers, so I guess he's pretty relatable. <laughs> and uh, this was probably the fiddliest to adapt into a charm format because I had to take into consideration all the transparency and stuff like that. So basically when you send off your files, they have several layers. You have to make a layer that's going to just print white as a backing for your image. And because of the partial transparency on this bit of the sky here, I had to make sure that white was removed in the right areas. And yeah, I just had to be very precise and make sure that everything was clear enough for the text and stuff as well. So overall, I'm just really relieved that they've all come out well, but especially this one. So yeah, I will update when I've got all the pieces on and all the charms are all together and they're listed in my store and I really hope that people will like them because I'm just I'm just so relieved they came out well. I was just really worried. So yeah, I'm super happy about that. So there's this thing that's been going around recently called Draw This In Your Style where basically artists are creating an illustration and then inviting people to recreate it in their own styles to see how they interpret it. And I thought it was really interesting to take a specific piece and see how someone else will perceive it and how they will present it in their own style because everyone's work is, even if they try and kind of make it the same, everyone's work is really different from their various different influences and stuff. So I decided to create uh, this guy right here. So I kind of created this guy uh, on the spot, he was just a spontaneous character design. I really enjoy working on him and I think I might make him into an original character. Um, but yeah, I made a hashtag called RB Illustration Redraw. Uh, thank you to the person who suggested that I should actually make a hashtag because I had forgotten about the whole thing that meant I would actually be able to find the redraws that people did. So um, yeah, this is the ones that are on Instagram and then there's some on Twitter as well and I've been so amazed at the response. I've had so many amazing pieces and yeah, I'm just really happy because a lot of the people who've done it have said that they found that it pushed their uh, limits in terms of what they thought they could achieve, it made them try something different and that generally that they enjoyed it. So I'm really happy that people have been enjoying it and yeah, it's just really nice to be able to inspire people to try something a bit different and it almost feels like a collaborative effort in making a character in a way because 
I've had some people have drawn him like really soft and gentle like this one here he's feeding a deer and it's really sweet and then there's another one somewhere I don't know where it's gone now uh, this one where the character looks really ominous and uh, and scary and I really love these different interpretations because I didn't give the character any backstory I just presented him as he is and allow people to take their own interpretations from that so I'm really enjoying seeing everyone's different variations of that so let me know if any of you guys have done this challenge if you've drawn a piece for other people to reinterpret or if you've taken part and redrawn somebody else's piece and what you thought of it So I'm back from my little trawl around the range and hobbycraft. Sorry about what's going on in the background here, I don't know why my bedroom looks like it's just sliding into oblivion. As far as I can tell the desk is straight and the tripod is straight and everything's fine but every time I record from this angle there's something happening here and I'm probably being really stupid but I haven't figured it out so sorry about that. Um, but yeah, uh, I decided to go back to hobbycraft after my visit the other day because I saw some things that I wanted to check out again and I spotted these, which I've been curious about since I saw them in some people's scroller box videos because basically I used to have a scroller box subscription and then it just kind of got too expensive to keep up because I wasn't keeping up with the challenges so I decided to cancel it but then I saw that some people had got these watercolour pencils from Faber Castell and they're called the... what are they called? Gold Faber Aqua, which I've probably said wrong but yeah, apparently they're very good quality but I just wanted to buy a small quantity to try them out so I didn't invest in a large set just in case I didn't like them. So I decided to just get these two colours, which they don't have the names on the side but they are 173 and 283 um, and they're like a muted brown and a green 
and I might use them in tandem or separately, I'm not sure, but I made sure to get colours that weren't in the sets that they sell, because then if I decide to invest in a larger set I wouldn't get any duplicates, at least not in the 12 or the 24 set, um, as far as I could tell. So yeah, I'm really excited to try these out and, uh, and see how they go, so I'm definitely going to give those a go very soon. Um, and then while I was over there, um, I went to the range, which was nearby, and I picked up a couple of things. So just over here, I got this book, which I picked firstly because it's really pretty. So there's the design a bit clearer, with this space. Um, but also it's a project book. I thought this would be good for using for YouTube, because what I actually want to do is better plan out my videos, because I'm having issues where I'm having a lot of half-edited content drifting around on my computer and then it takes ages to actually get around to finishing a video. So what I want to do is like make a proper plan of what I want to do when I want to do it and just get it done. So I'm hoping this will help me to plan out things better. I can sort of make lists and sketch some ideas in the back and hopefully just kind of make it more organised because it is very important to me to regularly update this channel. I don't have any sort of schedule because I don't want to pressure myself because I've got um, inconsistent like day job hours and com commissions and things like that so I don't want to set an actual schedule and then stress myself out or cause disappointment if I don't manage to stick to it but I would like to manage to do more regular uploading on this channel because at the moment it's kind of all over the place so fingers crossed I can manage that um, and then I also grabbed these while I was there which kind of match the project book and they're just sticky notes which I thought were really cute and I just put these in with my shop orders as a thank you. So um, yeah, just a small haul but um, loads of temptation <laughs> and uh, I'm really excited to try and plan out my channel a bit better and try out those pencils. So the clasps finally came in for my acrylic charms which is a relief and also totally my fault because I forgot to order them until the acrylic pieces were on their way to me so that was really stupid. But yeah, they're here now. Um, I'm really happy with them and I'm also happy with how much easier they are to assemble than the other ones I was doing because that took quite a while and there's a hundred of these so I'm very glad that it's easier. Um, I'm really happy with the array of colours as well because you could choose different colours for these ones. I don't know how well you can see the difference between them in this daylight lamp which is kind of washing everything out. But there's three different colours. So on this Taran one here we have this kind of distressed muted bronze colour which is my personal favourite and then I also put that on the natural one so thank you to Lauren who suggested putting different metals on the natural 20 and the natural one so we've got the shiny gold on the 20 and then we've got the distressed gold on uh, or bronze on the one to kind of reflect the difference between the two and give them a bit of extra contrast and then we've got silver on cinnamon just because I thought it fitted his colouring better and also it works with the space theme and then finally we've got the shiny gold again which is on the other Taran one to match the triangle pattern there. So one day I would like to make that into like a foil print if I could, but obviously foil prints are very expensive to do. But yeah, that's an idea for another time. So meanwhile, I've got to assemble another 95 charms, so that's going to be fun. But yeah, um, I've had a really amazing reception to these designs online when I've posted previews, and I'm really happy that people are looking forward to them, especially because obviously these are my original characters, they're my babies and it means a lot that people are that invested they would like to wear them on their bags and stuff so yeah thank you to you guys for your support, I really appreciate it and yeah these will be in the shop very soon hopefully. So as I've mentioned in some other videos I've been trying to focus more on sketchbook work lately and just kind of doodles and practice pieces and not focusing so much on just big finished illustrations and that's it. So I've been trying out a few different sketchbooks and this is the one I've been working on lately which is a Sea White of Brighton hardback sketchbook. Um, that's what it is, there we go. Um, and I got this in Hobbycraft for, I think it was on sale for about £4, it's usually £8 I think. And this is really nice paper, it's worked pretty well so far with different media, like this was a test with those um, watercolour brush pens that I used in a recent video and it didn't buckle the paper, it, there's a mark there because I accidentally spilled water but it didn't come through. Um, I don't think it's suitable for markers because it's very hard to find a sketch pad that's suitable for markers but again there you can see the paper's held up really well with that water. So yeah I've actually been really impressed with this one so far, it's got a nice texture but nothing too much. 
So yeah, that's definitely a good one. The only downside is the ring binding. Um, I bought this one just because it was cheaper. I think they do have hardback ones as well. But um, yeah, this was in the sale, so I just got this one. But it does make it quite hard to scan because I am actually working on my next sketchbook. And then um, they had a sale in WH Smith. Um, I have turned into a bit of a WH Smith fiend. Um, they have had some sales on their art supplies lately. And it's unfortunate because my local post office is in WH Smith. So I have to pass through the art department whenever I want to post some stuff and stuff catches my eye <laughs> so I try to be good but these were pretty good value they were down to 2 49 each and I've got some really cool stickers on here so this is from uh, Lissy Rain and then this is from Michelle Marham aka Feline Trickster and this is from Anna Landin who is a really awesome artist who does a lot of D&D stuff um, unfortunately I've never met her because I didn't go to the same convention that she was at but Lissy was there and she bought this from her for me so thank you Lissy um, yeah, so this is a uh, paperback WH Smith sketchbook and it has, um, I've found that it actually has very white pages, which is interesting. You can see there next to the sea white, the sea white is slightly more yellow. Um, this is quite smooth, it's, yeah, I'm, I'm not very good at describing paper, it's just, yeah, it, it's smoother than the sea white. So um, yeah, this piece is just um, a doodle of my boy Taron in a recent game when he cleaned up a bit and had a bath and sorted his hair out and it didn't last very long but you know just make the most of it while it's there <laughs> so um, yeah this was also done with uh, WH Smith fine liners which I've noticed that Smiths have started rebranding a lot of their art supplies saying that they're now light fast and archival quality and if that's true then they are amazing value for that kind of standard because the the pack of fine liners was down to from fourteen pounds to seven forty nine I think for six different sizes, and they are really nice to use. I haven't done a direct comparison with like the Stedler, which are currently my favourites, so I should probably do a comparison where I ink two pictures side by side to see how they compare. Um, but yeah, they were really nice to use, and it'd be interesting to see how well they do last. So. Um, yeah, I got a bit off topic there, but um, yeah, that's the WH Smith. And then this last one here um, is from Clinton's, and it is a Paper Destiny, which is, there you go, you can see that if my camera will focus. I keep having to stop recording because there's one of those cleaning vehicles going past and it's making so much noise. Um, what was I saying? Yes, um, Paper Destiny is like one of those fancy stationery brands, less than like an art supply brand, so I wasn't really expecting a lot from this sketch pad, but I'm really intrigued by the paper because it is kind of an ivory tone. If you actually look at it next to the Smith's paper, this is pure white and this is really kind of ivory, and it doesn't say the thickness of this paper, but it feels a lot thicker and it's very, very textured. And I know it's personal preference, but I do like working on textured paper. And all I've done so far is this, so if this is just in pencil, this is just a standard HB pencil sketch of my D&D Cleric Renner. And yeah, I, I feel like the texture of the paper allowed for a nice variation of tone, and I just generally really enjoyed using it. But I haven't used it with fine liners or any other media yet, so it might not be appropriate for those. I don't know at all how it would do with watercolour or other wet media, because, like I said, it just doesn't say on here what it's for, so honestly, no idea. Yeah, I'm excited to try out some different things with this as well. So that thing I said about not doing London MCM in October might turn out to be a lie, because um, basically that was before I found out that Critical Role were going to be there, and there's no way I can miss Critical Role being at MCM, because how often are they going to be in the UK again? but um, I might be there sharing a table. I'm not going to get a whole table because I'm trying to cut down costs because I've got two other conventions this year. Um, I've never done four conventions in one year before, so I know a lot of people do way more conventions than me, but I, I never usually do that many. Um, it's just this year I've got more holiday from my day job because I've been there for over five years. I'm also well on the way to planning my third sketchbook. I didn't realise I had this many files ready to go into it, but yeah, um, I was just going through some stuff and I have... Probably this is half-ish of, of the amount I would like to have in the book because I like to make quite large sketchbooks. Uh, it might be slightly smaller, I don't know, but yeah, this is uh, preliminary stuff, just files I'm throwing into a folder ready to make sure that they're the right resolution and format them correctly and everything. So I have no idea what it's going to be called yet, but uh, yeah, third sketchbook is coming together. And then also 
Um, yeah, I've got, there's a few files ready to actually make into final pieces for my fashion zine, or fashion art book, it's not strictly a zine, but yeah. Um, that's my long-term project at the moment. I'm really, really excited for it and I hope other people will like it as well, but I'm having so much fun coming up with ideas. Um, I'll give you a bit of a sneaky peek. Um, this one I'm particularly excited about. This is my boy Taron. Um, you know there's going to be a lot of Taron in this book, but I will try and distribute it evenly with my other characters as well. Um, this is a modern day AU. I've got so many AUs, you guys. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is modern day and it's a future Taran. Um He's a little bit bigger than he is currently because at the moment he's he's not great in terms of health because he's been running around in the wilderness without much food and he was held prisoner for two years so it's obviously taken a toll on him. Um, so I kind of, this is a, a, a way of me showing what he would look like when he's better and healthier and happier and all round in a better place. So yeah, he's just chilling on the beach and he's got a drink and he's having a good time in his crop top. <laughs> It's really, really self-indulgent, but you know me. Um, and then there's another preview. This is uh, my D&D cleric, Renna, and her brother, Remy, who is played by Lissy Rain. And they're just chilling. Uh, well, Renna's chilling. Remy has his eye out because he's very protective of his sister. So, uh, yeah, I've got loads of stuff planned, but that's the few initial sketches that I have so far. So, um, yeah, this, this project is just... it means a lot to me. Um, that I'm at the point where I think people are interested enough in my original characters to buy this book about them, so I'm so looking forward to working on it. So I'm going to end the vlog here, and hopefully it won't be too long this time. I had some feedback last time that the vlog was too long and not everyone has the time to sit down and watch an hour-long vlog, which I totally understand, so thank you for your feedback, guys. As always, do let me know if you have any comments on my videos that will make them easier for you to view or more accessible or whatever, because I want them to be enjoyable for you guys. So yeah, just finishing it off here. This is a little doodle I did with the Polychromos pencils that I bought. This is another Taran doodle. This is Babby Taran. Really, really tiny Taran. I don't even know how old he was in this picture because elf timelines are so confusing. <laughs> like he's 120 at the present point of the campaign. So I'd imagine like 20s or 30s here. I don't know, is that elf toddler years? I've no idea. But yeah, here's Taran as a toddler having a bit of a strop because he had a lot of those. And this was colored with the polychromos pencils that you saw me buying or talking about buying earlier in the video. So yeah, they're so enjoyable to use. I really love these colors and they blend so beautifully together. So yeah, I really enjoyed working on this silly little piece and I really hope you enjoyed the video. So I will have updates on the convention that I went to, Worthing Meanwhile, and the things that happened after that in my next vlog, because like I said, I don't want to make this one too long. So stay tuned for that. Really hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you as always for stopping by and watching my videos, and I hope to see you next time. Bye!